Hello, in this video I want to tell you about pin -up interrupts on microcontrollers. To do that I've made a small program here. Um, on our panel we've got a bunch of switches connected to port B and an LCD on port C and similarly what I've got is I've got a bit of hardware here it's a matrix e blocks board with a PIC micro microcontroller switches on port, C, port B and an LCD on port C. This is our program um, and this is the main program and you can see there's nothing in the main loop. The way it works is we have an interrupt and if I double click on the interrupt macro you can see the properties. Now the purpose of an interrupt is to stop your program from doing what it was doing on an event that's important to you. For example a burger alarm going off uh, or another event like that. And there are lots of different types of interrupts. You can see some here. This is quite a modern device, a PIC 18877. And you can interrupt on pin changes, on timers internally. So you can count a certain number of clock cycles and then have an interrupt internally. Um, or you can interrupt on a communications event when, it, when a message is coming in. So on a, a UART receiving a byte or on various uh, serial port events. And you can see there are lots of different types of interrupts. Uh, the two we're interested in here really are int zero and interrupt on change. Int zero is like a, a traditional interrupt and we're going to use that uh, later. So the terminology is probably uh, from older microcontrollers. And if you look at the properties here, um, you can interrupt on either a rising or falling edge of a signal and you can choose any pin from port A or port B for your int zero interrupt. And we're going to choose an interrupt on port B bit zero. So in other words, when that switch is pressed and when that switch is pressed, it's going to run the macro port B interrupt, which you can see here. So we initialize the LCD just after the initializing the interrupt there. And then the, the microcontroller runs around in this loop, waiting until port B bit zero is activated. And then it goes to our interrupt routine here. It then sets the cursor to be top left, prints a string saying don't press that, waits for a second and then clears the display. And you can see that simulating here uh, quite nicely. I press that pin, it does that. And also you can see that it is functioning nicely in the hardware. So if I press port P bit zero, we compiled that earlier and you can see that that's working nicely. However, so that, that explains uh, how interrupts work, but there is a problem here. This is extremely bad coding practice because what you should do is keep all of the code in your interrupts to an absolute minimum. And there are lots of reasons for that. Basically, um, interrupts can clash. Lots of different types of components use interrupts. And if you don't uh, keep your code to a minimum, then at some point you're going to have a problem with a program that's going to be difficult for you to debug. So what I'm going to do next is show you an alternative, which is a much better coding practice. So here you can see I've modified the program slightly. The interrupt properties are exactly the same, but here is the interrupt macro and there's only one command in it. Now we've got a, a variable here, a Boolean variable called interrupted and when the macro uh, interrupt macro runs, it just sets interrupted to be true. And that's the only command in the interrupt. In the main loop here, I've got a decision box which says if it's interrupted is true, then go and uh, print the message on the display. Afterwards, set interrupted to be false. So the program functions in exactly the same way, but it's very clean in terms of the code in the um, interrupt routine. And if you press play, and you click on the uh, switch, then you find the functionality is identical. And if you adopt this coding practice when you're doing interrupts, you'll find that you don't run into trouble as much in your programs as they get more complex. Okay, so that explains how interrupts work and what good coding practice is for interrupt design. Thanks for watching.